All right. Our next and final speaker needs no introduction in Nigeria, but also needs no introduction to the platform. And, you know, I always try to say this again. And somebody asked me this on social media. And I said, in office, out of office, we will not do platform any year without inviting His Excellency Professor Yemi Oshibaju. The first time we invited him to speak, and he has spoken every year since then. And I had no idea he will be the vice president. Even though I must tell you, as a senior politician who sent somebody to me in 2015 for support, and he asked me, and I told him then, this was not 2015, what I'm saying, 2011. And I told him then, and he's watching now. He said, well, they had picked their vice presidential candidate, and they gave me. And I said to him, you people missed, this is 2011. God is my witness. I said, you missed something. He said, what? I said, you should have taken. This is 2011. There was no APC. I said to him, you should have picked Professor Yemi Oshibajo as your vice presidential candidate. He put his hand on his head. He said, how did you think about that? I said, watch it. So I've been inviting him since 2010. I asked somebody, I think a friend of mine, Shadia Yadibanjo, and I asked, I said, I need somebody who is a Christian, who has worked in integrity, who can speak the language that people will understand. She said, there are two people. You want an older person? Mr. Christopher Kolladi. You want a younger person? Professor Yemi Oshibaju. I said, all right, I will go for the younger person. Professor Yemi Oshibaju. That is what happened. And he drove in into where we did it. The first one was in T TBS. And we had different workshops. It wasn't the main session. It wasn't on television. He drove in wearing a blazer, and he walked into the meeting and spoke to maybe about, it was a breakout session, about maybe a thousand people then, and he left. And since then, any time we have the platform, I will write his name down first. And I did not think that him going into office, in fact, I felt maybe it's, I, he will say he doesn't want to do it again, but I did not see going into office should make me stop inviting a person. So every year since then, we have invited him. All right? So let us rise to our feet and welcome to the podium His Excellency, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Ashibai. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please sit. The, the convener of the platform, Pastor Poju Oyemade, uh, let me thank you again for your constant invitations to come here practically every year for, just as you said, for almost eight years now. Uh, when, when you uh, first invited me, I was a much uh, younger man, as you can imagine. <laughs> because I'm told that so many young politicians have spoken here today. <laughs> so it's time for an older politician <laughs> to speak. And I want to thank you again for your very, uh, for, for your confidence uh, in me and also your confidence in this platform to continuously expose some of the best minds that we have in our nation and some of the best ideas that we have constantly every year. And I want to also commend all of the uh, previous speakers and to say that this is, in my view, one of the most important platforms that we have in our country to express our views, to exchange ideas. 
distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Nation building in its classical sense really just refers to the formal and informal processes by which political leadership attempt to build a national identity, a national ethos, a national spirit, especially in ethnically and religiously diverse societies. But it is my own thesis that while government's role is in casting the vision and creating the environment for nationhood, the real building of nations is done and best seen through the accomplishments of many outside of political leadership. Men and women in business, in agriculture, in education, in entertainment, and the arts, who by just doing their business diligently, or serving faithfully, or making sacrifices, contribute to building the economies and social systems that ultimately build the nation. So this afternoon, I'm going to be sharing with you stories of some young people, many of whom I have had the privilege of meeting, who by just doing their own work faithfully, have contributed to the building of our economy and the building of our nation. They have increased our national pride and our confidence. They have created opportunities for others, as well as inspired others to be the best that they can be. My point is that we can contribute in profoundly transformative ways to changing our society by just doing our own bit with excellence. Let me begin with the exceptional role of young Nigerians in innovation and technology. On the 17th of April, I did a tour of technology businesses and hubs in Lagos. My first stop was Paystack. Here is a safe payment system which offers seamless money transactions between businesses and their customers. It was established in 2016 in the midst of the recession by two young Nigerian alumni of the Babcock University, Shola Akinlade and Ezra Olubi. Within the first three months of 2018, they have processed over 3 billion Naira and they generate about 40 billion Naira annually for Nigerian businesses. The company is today powering over 9,000 businesses that did not exist two years ago, and they have created over 25,000 jobs. Paystack has almost 50 employees. All of the employees are under 35 years of age. I was also at Andela. Andela is a multinational company specializing in training software developers, co-founded by the Nigerian-born Inya Boyeji, Ian Carnivale, Jeremy Johnson, and Christian Sass. The company estimates that in the next 10 years, there will be 1.3 million software development jobs and only 40,000 computer science graduates to fill them. So the company's vision is to change the culture of Nigeria and the African continent by developing talent and potential in Nigeria. Today, the company has over 1,000 employees worldwide. To enable that to happen, the role of government is to mainstream technology startups to be able to benefit from the incentives of industry. But we'll talk a bit more about that. Kola Oyene's Venia Business Hub was also another point where I visited. This is one of the earliest business hubs in Nigeria. Here he has provided an efficient environment for many startups, most of which use each other's skills and technology cooperatively. But the pioneer of Nigerian hubs is clearly the Co-Creation Hub, or CC Hub, founded in 2010 by two young social entrepreneurs, Botsun Tijani and Femi Lunge. It provides a platform for innovative technology to solve social problems. Nearly 50 Nigerian tech-driven dri businesses were incubated in the CC Hub. Some of them include the now famous uh, Budget, We Cyclers, Jenny Games, Life Bank, Gummy Way, Vacant Boards, Tracklist, Autobox, Stoughton, Grid Systems, and Marmalit, so many others. All these businesses were started 
all of these businesses were started by young men and women under 35 years old. One of the startups that came out of Vinia Hub is called Flutterwave. Flutterwave was founded in May 2016 by Aboyeji again, and a team of engineers and former bankers. This is a payment technology company that has since processed over $2 billion, not Naira now, worth of transactions on its payment platform. 